Hi everyone, I decided to jump online today because I want to show you uh, a few more pieces of information that I think will help with your marketing plans. For anyone who has already submitted, if this helps you or you want to add to your project in any way, feel free. I'll always mark the most recent version that you upload to Brightspace. Um, and for anyone who hasn't yet finished their marketing plan, I'm hoping that some of these resources will further support the work we've done. Um, we worked on marketing plans all throughout the semester, uh, usually in our um, lab day, and you all had templates, um, physical templates that I provided, as well as the pitch handout that was given um, by Susan Eldridge in our class, where you were encouraged to have a one to three minute pitch of what your business is, what it's all about. So that's like your business overview or your business pitch if you're ever talking about it with anyone. What your brand is, a little story about your company, um, and the value proposition of your product or offer. So in your textbook on page 621, there is an abbreviated marketing plan there as a sample for Boston Pizza. So it has everything in it about Boston Pizza, the SWOT analysis, the executive summary, um, the market description, your competitive analysis, the overview of your product or service, um, your four P's, your strategies, how you're going to position the product, how you're going to price the product, how you'll distribute it and sell it online or in stores or, you know, are you using Shopify or Facebook? Like, how are you getting the product to the market? A little bit about your budget to start and sell, um, how much capital you'll need, how much profit you'll make on each unit, that kind of thing. Um, this is another sample that I'm going to post uh, for you to see and use. It includes a lot of information that should be in your business plan, your marketing plan. So in this document, you'll see that what you need is always your company description, the mission of your company, um, your objective, your SWOT, and any industry analysis you might have done. Uh, that usually includes like, who your competitors, competitors are, what they sell their product for, what their brand looks like, and then how you'll differentiate from your competition. You've got your four P's, which is known as your marketing mix. You've got... Uh, the market research, which should include the target and demogra demographic information of who you're selling to, a little bit about your financials. So that's one example. I also have two that I will show you now. Um, one of them is if you are doing a product. This is a t-shirt company that a student did from the past. This is their brand and their cover page. They called it Vacay Apparel. So every business plan opens with a title page, table of contents that shows me everything that's going to be in your report. Your executive summary, which I'm sure Marlo has taught you, includes what your report is about and everything I will find in the report. Next, you will have a company profile or a product profile, an overview telling me who you are, what you're selling, um, that kind of information, a bit about the business. It's nice to also add visuals. Mission and vision, a lot of students will come up with that, the direction they want to take their company. Some will even include the values of their company. This was a very strong business plan, so it really should set the bar high. SWOT analysis is in there. Um, more visuals. PESTEL is not required, but some students will do it because that helps them understand the competitive environment they're in, the factors economically uh, and socially that they may have to encounter. The target market. So for t-shirts, they were selling to a young demographic. They talked about their price point and that they were looking for people who had disposable income or whose parents might want to buy the product for them. They were looking to sell to young men and women equally, both, both target markets. And they intended to mostly uh, um, target online shoppers and use social media. They did some research on demographics in Canada in terms of who's available to sell to, how many people are in their age group. They would have got that from Stats Canada. If you're selling to Cumberland County only, uh, the Cumberland Connector website has some great demographic data specific to Cumberland County. So they've got their specific segments. 
Um, let's see, they've got the description of their product. These are going to be nice quality t-shirts with a beach theme, the whole vacay feel. They're explaining their brand, the quality of their t-shirt, the colors that are available. I'm going to skip through some of this. Their competitive advantage, so what makes them different than other t-shirt companies? They were going to do a trip giveaway once a month. So every time you make a purchase, and that purchase will be put into a pool to win uh, a chance for a trip. So they'd be doing a draw across Canada. The other uh, attraction to this is that Canadian winters, people like to have a, a trip to look forward to, so that, that would be a nice selling feature, a value proposition. They talked about other competitors locally. Bonfire hoodies were one at that time. And East Coast Lifestyles, another competitor. So they included information about those. Of course, you talk about your branding. For them, they were going to be using a palm tree as their icon. Um, how they were going to operate was going to be through online sales. They included also that they would be including shipping for free and would do everything through a web page and a social media page like Facebook and Instagram. They are going to do a little bit of corporate social responsibility by giving away um, to charities if you want to do that. Um, they also were surveying their customers to find out what their customers would be interested in. They were going to use brand ambassadors as a marketing tool to get people sporting their shirts and promoting that online for them. Some of this is more than you would need. And a small budget in terms of how much it was going to cost them. That kind of thing. So you get the idea of the, of the pieces that should be in your marketing plan. If you go back to the table of contents, they have more in theirs than I required because they did a lot more regarding their finances. But you should have these basic components for sure and some brief financial information. One more to show you, and that was a event marketing instead of product marketing. This was the project from last year. Students did a Cumberland Connects conference, and I've showed you a lot of these when we were in class. I brought the physical marketing plans in to show you. There's their cover page. Always expect a table of contents next. And this again, you'll see executive summary, an overview of their event or product. Um, their SWOT analysis, their four Ps, their market research. The market research was, in this case, they analyzed three other conferences so they could look at what others had done so they could find a way to differentiate and compete. They had some social media presence and some promotions. Here's a little look at theirs. There's their SWOT what they've got for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats when they're offering an event like this. They've got their four Ps. They were offering a conference at a $25 per person price point, and students would be free. Where it was going to be located was at our campus, and how they were going to promote it was by radio, social media, word of mouth, posters, emails, direct phone calls, and a survey to check in with customers. They actually did their survey. That's some of their survey data. This is their market research where they looked at some other conferences that have happened in the province and they analyzed those conferences so they could learn from them on what to do differently and how to make themselves competitive. It's the second and third conference. They had a poster, which you can create on something like Poster My Wall if you want to have a poster. I encourage websites, websites like Logo Joy or Wix if you're developing social media posts or content or you want to have a sample business card or a sample sign. You can create those things for free, screenshot them or use the snipping tool and put them in your plan without having to pay anything. They had a registration form. They also did some radio, public service announcements. The students went and did the recording themselves. They had social media pages and they were able to track how those pages went. For the spring market team, you guys also have these sh and should include snippets in your report. Uh, let's see, is there more on their social media? We actually did do um, a newspaper article. This was a snippet from that. Let's see, a little bit of their budget. 
what they expected to generate in revenue and costs. A little bit more, let's see. I think that'd be about it. That would be applicable to your plan. Um, that was their team of everyone who worked and helped and volunteered on the conference. Lots of visuals are nice to include. Again, lots of pictures. Um, you may or may not have all of these pieces, but these are things you can certainly think about. So if you're looking at the web page on Brightspace. This is the last thing I want to show you. On Brightspace, I've given you samples of event marketing plans, how to get started on your own marketing plan, um, how to do a one-page business or marketing plan, how to help you design logos or use Wix and Poster My Wall. And last but not least, I included another template. Um, there's the mention of Boston Pizza on page 621. Actually, I think depending on what book you have, it might be on a different page, but in the 600s. And I'll show you this. So this is the template that I also recommend on what should be in your marketing plan. And you can get this free from the website so that if you're having trouble, you can kind of just take sections and plunk away um, into your report. As long as I see things like your brand, you know who your customers are and who you're targeting. You've got some customer data and some information. You know your competitors because you've analyzed them. You've looked at their brands. You've taken snippets from their pages to get some ideas. We can always borrow from those ideas and find ways to make it unique and make it your own. Always a SWOT. Um, always your differentiation and value proposition on what makes your company different, why we should buy your product over somebody else's. Um, some of the actions you'll take, those are the strategies that you'll take. Um, those are the most important pieces. So if you click download now, you should be able to get access to that plan without any problems. Let's see here, just showing you so that you can have another example of ways to build your own. So that's the plan once it opens. I've downloaded it. It's a Word document. And they will kind of walk you through step by step. What's your vision? What's your value proposition? How are you positioning yourself? Are you better quality, lower price, better customer service? What makes you unique with that vacay apparel? What made them unique is lots of people sell t-shirts, but not everyone does these tropical giveaways um, and free shipping. I have encouraged you to do personas. It's not required, but it's one of those things that takes your plan from good to great. Um, the customer personas is when you actually, you can Google it, customer persona, who's my customer, how much money do they have, where do they live, do they shop online, do they shop using the phone as their device or laptops or tablets, really narrowing it down to who you're targeting specifically. And if you can get a persona built, then you know exactly how to reach them and go after them. Always competitor analysis, uh, your pitch. Again, going back to the presentation we had with uh, Susan Eldridge on how to do a pitch. That is um, the basics of what's in every plan. A budget is always good. Uh, if you have more than one person on your team who's responsible for what, if you're the only person, you're probably the sole proprietor. And any advertising you're gonna do, if you're gonna do email marketing, if you're gonna do any public relations. Uh, at this point, you can see that all the plans have main components and then unique components, and so should yours. You can be creative and colorful, have some fun with it, but at the end of the day, what you get marked on is that you know how to do a marketing plan, you know the basic components, you detail it, you're clear, it's well presented, well formatted, and you put some effort in, and then you'll present it to me on your scheduled time. I've offered at least 50 times, I'm offering again, reach out. I can do a one-on-one -on -one call or Skype or Microsoft Teams to help you. I can look at your plan, find some holes and gaps, and give you more feedback. But more time will only allow you to procrastinate, and what we need to do is just get the work done. So all the best, connect with me, and I look forward to seeing you uh, through Teams and reading your plans. Bye for now.